Welcome to Growing Home, the podcast that helps you take care of the place that means the most to you, your home. I'm your host, Terry Therian, alongside your co-host, Len Giddix. So Len, we're back with another spring edition of the Growing Home podcast. Yes, we are. Right. And, you know, as you and I have been talking and as with a lot of our customers and many homeowners, you know, we're eager to get out there and put some time and effort into the landscape. Mm -hmm. But can you, you know, it's really important to the timing of stuff as the weather improves and the weather changes. You know, where do you see that we're at late April, early May? Like, what's that transition? What's that progression of the spring that we're at at that time? Right. Well, uh, in mid-April, we are all chomping at the bit to put something in the ground. Mm -hmm. And knowing that uh, May 15th is the last killing frost. It it, it could happen, and it may not happen, okay? Yeah. And a lot of people hedge their bets with planting corn and whatever, and uh, you can do that, but you're also, uh, whatever you're planting is an investment. So to ask for tomato plants now, Unless they're protected from now until after May 15th, you're risking uh, buying tomato plants again. And many people do. Yep. You know, and you can put the little, little caps on them or they're, they're used, you could put, protect them in the garden, but still uh, something like a tomato or any of those summer warm loving plants won't grow won't the root system doesn't really grow until the soil's 50 to 55 degrees right so and so it's what 40 something right now maybe well we should be between 45 and 49 degrees yeah. um and that's off uh, cornell's website is that's where they expect us to be this time of the year yeah. i am seeing um that our soil is warming up a little bit faster than usual since we had yeah. you know the past few weeks of you know some warm weather yeah. but you know it could cool down again right well um, that's what rectal fo- thermometers are for we don't use them anymore so you stick them in the soil right <laughs> <laughs> or or just i guess that's just the uh any thermometer will the other name for a soil thermometer yeah. <laughs> multi-purpose but yeah we're and that's what we always tell people is you know as eager as we get and as anxious as we get about getting stuff out there and you know like this past weekend we had temps up in the 70s yep. it's not yet safe and, and we're actually a ways away farmer's almanac says we yep. should be expecting some colder weather at the end of the month right you know as much as i'm a fan i really hope that's not true right and you know how much in my lifetime there's been a couple of snowstorms pre may 15th significant snowstorms it may happen it may not happen but it's so especially nowadays it seems in the last 10 years the weather has become more variable that you can't predict it uh, I'd love to have my awning put up for Easter Sunday, but the company that puts up that awning won't do it. They've mm-hmm. got my awning for the winter storage, but they won't do it because they have a liability if they do. Yeah. They'll make me sign a, a waiver to say that if it snows and it comes down, they're not responsible. Well, same way with plants. Yep, yeah. I mean, we're cautious at the stores. I mean, if you drive by, you see our shade structures out there, yeah. which uh, protect the plants from yep. getting... You know, too much direct sun while they're not, as they're in pots and not sown yep. uh, into the soil. But, um, you know, right now, uh, our garden center staff, they've got about half of them up just in case something comes through and we have to take them all down. Right. Otherwise, they just become giant trampolines for the right. snow. Right. So, well, you know, it, that's a good, uh, uh, a good guide. If, the, if your local garden center doesn't have it on display, you probably shouldn't go in and ask for it because... Well, they don't make fun of you afterwards, but, uh, you know, there'll be talk that this this person came in and asked for tomato plants, and it's uh, March the 31st. Well, maybe maybe it's legitimate and you want tomato plants so that you can put them in your cold frame or inside the house and grow them up. That's all doable, but if you can also start from seed to do that a couple of weeks before that. Uh, that's what seed's for. You yeah. Know? And, yeah. But... A garden center can't afford to bring in tomatoes that early because they'll die on the shelf, and that's an investment for them. Yeah, and our idea is that when when we get the tomato plants, uh, you know, into the garden center, oh. we want them moved only once out there and ready for you to purchase. Right, and they're healthy plants, and you can take them home and be successful. Yeah, you know, when the plants do come in, and we've had last year actually we were really lucky. 
last year, by the end of April, I don't think we saw a temperature or a frost during the month of May. I don't remember going through any of the covers and we didn't even talk about it. We just said, all right, we don't, we don't have to prepare tonight. We don't have to put anything away. And it was by the end of May, we looked back and said, oh man, thank God we didn't have to do it. Cause there's a ton of work and we take all of that because we don't want any of the plants damaged. We want them to be looking their best. So you can come in right. and, you know, see what you're getting. Yep. Um, that's something the public doesn't see is uh, at uh, 4.30 when you're closing at 5, um, practically everybody's out covering plants on a risky evening. Yeah, if it takes two hours to pack up and put away, yeah. uh, it's all worth it. Because even, even, like, uh, even if plants are fine and some can handle the cold snap or, or the frost, they're just not going to be looking as good. And we don't we don't want that to be part of our presentation. Well, that's part of the problem. Yeah. See, the public demands a perfect plant, just like they they they, they demand the perfect pepper or tomato in the produce section. Um, they they need a perfect plant, and who can blame them for you yeah. know for the money? You're only going to buy it once, hopefully, if you buy it at the right time and plant it at the in the right way. Right. Uh, you should expect the best, and retailers go through a lot of uh, hoops to. Uh, yeah, and sure, our plans will probably never be perfect, but the way we look at it is we want to do our best to make sure we give the best plant possible to the customer, yep. and we always look back. If you know things didn't work out because we misjudged something or didn't make the right call on the, on the type of plants we brought in, whatever it may be, and we weren't yep. successful that year, then that's that. But if it was because we were lazy and we didn't take the put in the extra care, Shame we didn't put that you. extra effort... That's where that's where it doesn't sit well with us. Yeah. So, you know, we want those the plants to be in great shape when people come in and see our stock, and also that they're healthy and they're they're ready to go into the ground. And the same way with the the growers that you buy your product from, the local growers. I mean, your plants aren't coming in from California, and they could very well have been grown in California or in the south and then brought up here early in spring. Uh, but it hasn't gone through a New England winter. The plants that are grown here have gone through a New England winter. And because the public demands a perfect plant, there's so much that goes in on the growing side to make that happen, including over the winter. Mm-hmm. Um, the local nurseries will protect those plants from high winds, high snow, because you get broken branches with a lot of snow. Sure. So to put a, uh, the, all the plants... Uh, one particular grower that I'm thinking of, all their plants, all their shrubs and perennials in hoop houses, and that protects them from those hazardous hazardous winter conditions. I don't know how many times I can tell you that in the middle of uh, January, uh, the entire crew from the nursery has gone out and taken snow off the hoop houses because they were... We were afraid they were going to collapse from the weight of the snow. Oh man! Oh yeah! It was, it, and, and it was all hands on deck, really. That's how it is. Yeah. Yep. It. I mean, plants are they are they are laborious. I mean, you're. They are. Yeah, because it they don't stack, and you know they need to be fed every day, taken care of. Yeah. So, but and, and, rare, and rarely, only to the 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 rare person. Let me let me put it this way: Do they say thank you? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm still waiting for a few thank yous but yeah. well they start talking to you terry yeah. let me know yeah that. i will i i hope i get there soon <laughs> but cool so you know as we get into um or actually back let's let's finish our, our discussion on the last frost frost date we do tell everybody you know the safe bet is memorial day yep. that's that's when we're free and clear because the average frost date average last frost date is may 15th Yes. So it could fall on either side of that. Last right. year we got lucky. Some years we haven't. Um, but if you are, you know, what you're putting out there, um, you know, if you're putting it in the soil, you think you have, you know, a good window, a good forecast ahead of you, and you need to get it in. Right. You know, we have other things in other careers that, you know, a lot of us are balancing yeah. while trying to maintain our gardens. Um, you know, just be prepared that, you know, come down to the store, get a harvest guard or some sort of cloth to cover it. We cover all of our plants, you know, if we see a temp below 40 degrees, you'll see us out there covering with the white cloth mm-hmm. um, to make sure everything's protected. In the last 115 years, there's only been one year in New England where it actually snowed both in July and, and, and June. And that one is when uh, the volcano uh, Krakatoa erupted the year before. 
Really? Yeah. And it was, it's called, and look it up, uh, The Year Without a Summer. Oh, um, man. And many what? crops were destroyed, and in, in, in there were actually uh, uh, a, a little bit of a famine because uh, farmers couldn't feed their, their stock, and, and, and so they slaughtered them, and the pork was way down. And Do you remember what time frame this was? It was in it was in eighteen fifteen eighteen sixteen, oh. that was a little over a hundred years ago, right? Yeah, and uh, look it up. It's it's so no, no, interesting. 18, 18. Oh, so two hundred years ago. Two hundred years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Krakatoa. Oh man. Yeah, and, and I mean, so it was something. And then there was practic- there was frost practically through throughout New England all summer long because of the dust and and and. In the atmosphere and keeping the temperatures down. Oh man, I don't even want to jinx us on that. Cabot, like, Cabot, well, don't worry. There's, I've yeah. checked. There's no volcanoes, no volcanoes. erupting. Okay. Not that big. Okay, yeah, there could be a couple of small ones, but I wouldn't worry about them. Yeah, yeah. I think well, the last big one, or there's probably one after that, but the Icelandic volcano. In yeah, Europe. well, that just stopped yeah. traffic, uh, airline traffic. That's all. yeah. I mean, that, but like through all of you know Britain yeah. and that part of Europe it is a huge issue. And Heathrow is one of the busiest airports in the world sure so crazy stuff but anyway no volcanoes on the horizon no so volcanoes ho- right. so hopefully uh at least an average um averagely mild spring ahead of us here so in the garden center now what, what kind of stock is available and what does that mean we should be planting it or where are we at yeah well it's uh what uh, mid-april right now and, yeah. uh, and by the time this is out to everybody it'll probably be the last week of april yes so uh, this is very typical that uh, the shrubs that can be planted are brought into a garden center. They may not be in flower. They may be in bud, um, which is good, which mm-hmm. is good because they'll flower in place in your yard if you pick them up, especially early. Many customers uh, actually walk through the garden center and see a plant and say, oh, that's beautiful. I, I have to have that plant. That's not the way to do it. You, you really need to have the spot. I mean, plants have, what do they have going for you? You have to put them in the right conditions. Otherwise, they're not going to thrive. They're going to suffer. They're going to die. You're going to curse them. You're going to spend a lot of money on pesticides. And and, and, and then 10 years later, it'll probably die. If you take a rhododendron right now and put it in a soggy soil, you're dead. It's going to become disease. I can guarantee it. Yeah. But if you have the right spot with good drainage and, 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 and moderate sun, but not total sun, um, it'll do very well. Plant it too close to the house. Uh, it'll, it looks great now, but uh, you know, in five years, you're going to be ripping that out because it's bumping against the house or under the eaves. You know, it'll reach the eaves if it's a tall plant. Planting it under the windows um, is another thing. You don't want a seven-foot plant planted in front of a picture window because in five years it's going to be yeah. right in the middle of that picture window and the window wins right and so <laughs> it's important <laughs> that's right so it's important to have the spot ready so come out early pick the plant that you want there's a good selection early um before the flo- it actually flowers um and you know you can go to any number of sites to, uh, or actually the staff at a garden center, a good garden center like Mackey's, will uh, be able to help you pick out the right plant for the right place. Hmm. But you should have the right place involved. And, and what, they, what they're going to ask you is, is uh, what kind of sun does it get? Does sun or shade? What kind of soil conditions are they? Is it soggy or is it well-drained? If it's close to the house, there's usually been backfilled there, so it's usually sand and well-drained. <clears throat> That's why you see a lot of rhododendrons around houses. Right around the house, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, you know, a rhododendron is not a rhododendron. There's small rhododendrons, there's Eucusianum rhododendrons, and there's a large rhododendron. So they'll get to be 10 feet if you want them. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's the... The place is important. The drainage is important. And they'll also ask you, is it on the west, south, east, or north side of the house? Yeah, I was going to ask you then. So when, like, you know, we're in the garden center and we ask, you, you know, a customer that's in there, is it is it mostly sit, mostly shade, mostly sun? Like, where does that fall? Like, how do I, you know, objectively claim that my, um, the, gar- the bed that I'm planting in mm-hmm. is mostly, mostly shade, mostly sun? 